What's up guys and welcome to today's video. If you've been here before, shout out to you. Thank you for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, welcome, join the family, get down there and hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. So this is something even I have rarely seen. The BMW is here in the garage. As you can see, we have it jacked up and we have the left rear wheel off because Basically, it tried to kill me. I went to go drive it one day and it had zero brakes. I brought it back up the driveway and I took a look at it and I took a video and this was like two weeks ago. So here are the clips. Well, that's not good. I went out for a drive in the Beamer and it felt very sketchy leaving out of here in the driveway and I almost couldn't break going down my driveway. So I was like, instead of going to the street, I'm going to go right to the cul-de-sac. And when I was driving down the street, I could not break at all. Like I had to pump the brakes and it would go to the floor in order for it to stop, stop moving, I guess. As you can see, we have a bunch of little, little dots on the wheel. And that's from brake fluid just leaking everywhere. I don't know where it's coming from though. This is from it sitting right now. All of that. And then it leaked all over here into there. So let's at least find out what's going on with it. All right. So we have a pretty significant leak over here. It seems like it's coming from all the way up top over there. It seems like the line just got corroded and finally gave out. Right up there. Wow. So I've been having to drive my blue Subaru lately and I love driving that thing, but I don't want to drive it too much. The ride quality is nowhere near as good as a stock Bodie feel of this. So we're going to go ahead and fix this today. I gave it some thought and I figured why try to run the whole brake line all the way to the front because it goes through some weird places like you saw right now. It goes over the rear subframe basically. Then it goes right next to and kind of over the gas tank and it's just it's a nightmare so i don't want to try doing that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut it where i know it's good because literally there's only like a foot and a half that's bad so i'm gonna cut it where it, i know it's good and i'm gonna put a fitting there I'm gonna put a union and just run a short piece of brand new brake line and that should fix our issues oh and i also need to do a brake flush once it's done because we have introduced so much air into the system and I'm pretty sure the reservoir is completely empty. So let's go ahead and knock out the line first. So first thing I did was take everything out of my way and try to expose the single brake line. So if you see here, we have the rubber hose that goes from the caliper to the hard line. They meet up right over here. And then this is the hard line that is giving us the trouble. So as you can see, I can wiggle it all the way around and it moves all the way down here because I basically took three retaining clips off. So I took that off and I popped it out. Now my brake line is loose and I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it somewhere around here. So as you can see, it comes all the way down here. I have it loose basically all the way to the back. So I'm planning on cutting it like right here and then just flaring it right here, putting a union on it. And then from here to the caliper, it's not a long shot. So let's go ahead and cut this and then measure what type of brake line we need and go get it at the store. Okay, so here is our brake line. I had to cut it right here with the aviation snips. I wanted to pull it out all one piece, but it was not going to because of this bend. It also had another one here that I had to straighten out. But basically, I think with about eh, three or four feet, we should be safe. So we're going to go ahead and grab that at the store. I already know that it's a 3 16 because that's the only adapter that fits in there. So basically, what I'm going to do is go to the store, get some and then I will make the flare right here with the tool. Obviously, this would be an example. I'm gonna do it on the existing brake line so that I can match it up with one of these fittings right here. And then I'll put a union in between them to hold them together. And then obviously on the end, I'll have one of these 
that goes to my rubber hose and we should be good. So let's go to the store. All right, so it's actually the next day here. I went to the store and I got this 40 inch section of brake line. This is the Nikop or Nikop or whatever, the copper nickel. Um, it bends easier and it's a, uh, it doesn't rust, so hopefully I don't have this issue. The thing that was so hard to get was a union fitting for these bubble uh, flares. I got one and I completely didn't think about it and it was for like a standard double flare, which obviously wasn't gonna work out. So I had to wait another day because I had to order this, but it came in, so we have everything we need. What I want to go ahead and do right now is bend the brake line and get it to the shape of the old one. And then on the existing line, we're gonna go ahead and try this trick that I found where you can take a standard tool for a single or double flare and make a bubble flare. So hopefully we can get it done. It seems pretty straightforward. They say to, instead of using like the uh, beveled end right here to use the back of it. So we're gonna go ahead and try and cross our fingers that it works because I don't have a bubble flare tool. If it doesn't turn out good, then all we have to do is get the right tool. Just make one flare and that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and bend the line first and then we'll figure it out. All right, so we pretty much traced up until this point right here that part is just a lot longer than this i think i don't know it might not be though they aren't precise measurements but i think i think it'll do so i'm gonna go ahead and try feeding it through right now and going from there so i didn't record any of the whole routing the line because i wanted to pre-bend it and honestly if you're doing this don't do that because it just made things harder for me. The easiest way to do it is just to feed it through the back of the subframe first and then make the bends as you go because I had mine pre-bent and the pre-bends or the bends that were there already were basically getting in the way and I've been struggling with it for like half an hour which is absurd for a little 40 inch piece of brake line. So this is what I have done so far. So I know it's dark but I got it hooked up right there as you can see. Then I routed it. Let me see if I can shine a light. I routed it up there. I got that clip in so it's holding it nice and tight. It goes over the subframe, down through this side. And then I got it ready right there. Basically, I have to hook this piece up with this. So we're gonna go ahead right now and, oh, this is leaking still. But we're gonna go ahead and try to make a bubble flare. And then after that, we should be able to just put the union on and we should be done. We just have to put it in that clip right there, bolt it up and we should be good. So what you guys just saw right now was me failing miserably at making a bubble flare with a normal double flare tool. So I had no choice but to overnight the actual bubble flare tool. And as you guys saw, I got it done. Everything lined up. I put some brake fluid in the reservoir and it's not leaking anywhere. I haven't you know, pumped the pedal yet, but it's not leaking from there. 
What I did do was I cracked the bleeder screw loose and it's been dripping from there. So I know it's traveling all the way through. I'm pretty sure it would have leaked from there already if it was going to. But as you guys can see, it's wet right there because it's been dripping. Look, it has a drop right there. I've always liked cracking the bleeder loose and letting it drip for a little bit when it comes to anything brake related like when you replace a caliper or whatever i think it just makes the job easier i like to crack it loose and let it bleed on its own for a while that way when you start bleeding a lot of the air already escaped because even though it's not under pressure air always tries to find a way out right so if you have everything closed and you have this one open it's gonna try to make its way out here and usually it does so you get the majority out this way and now it's just time to bleed the rest and Go take it on a test drive and see if it works. Okay, all four corners are bled. Cabin filter is on, so everything is covering the reservoir. Everything is good to go, so we can go ahead and close the hood and take it on a test drive. All right, guys, well, everything seems to be A-OK, -okay, as you can see. I'm gonna break right now. And we're breaking. Pretty good. Perfectly fine. <laughs> so, let's go back to the house and park this thing, get it ready to start daily driving it again well the car is braking perfectly fine now and there is no leaks whatsoever other than that water leak which you can tell there's drips all over the bottom side skirt so we don't have any leaks which is awesome so I'm glad we can start daily driving this thing again I actually did miss driving it because of the nice comfiness of it next week I want to get into making it look a little better. I want to maybe paint the wheels and calipers. I think doing that alone is gonna change the look of the car drastically. So stay tuned for next week. I think, don't hold me to it, but I think next week that's what we're gonna get into. But yeah, that's gonna be it for now. So if you liked it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.